Hey folks, in today's lesson, we are going to continue our work on position time graph conversions. So last lesson we looked at converting a displacement to a velocity time graph. Well, now we're going to do the reverse. Okay. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's have a crack. Okay. So first thing that I'm looking for is how do I know it's a velocity time graph? Got to look at the y axis. That's the big one. Because if you, especially if you've just done the reverse, right? You've just done a displacement to a velocity time graph. You can be, get a bit confused. You might be like, oh, this object, it's moving, it's away from the origin, then it's moving towards the origin, then it's going away from the origin. Not true. This velocity is describing how far something is going over time. So we need to unpack it, take a few seconds. It's going at a constant speed for four sec, uh, for five seconds. Then it reverses and it does that for another five seconds. Then it starts to increase its velocity in the opposite direction over time. This is the technical word would be acceleration. And then we have a constant velocity and then we have no velocity for a few more seconds there. So just paint a little bit of a picture and understanding it. Number one. So number two, we need to figure out how much displacement has been covered by this object that's moving at a certain speed. And just to remind you that displacement equals velocity times time. Okay. Last lesson, we looked at velocity equals displacement divided by time. It's the same formula. I've just moved things around using a bit of algebra. So we can have a look here. Our first section, we are going at a speed of four meters per second. And we do that for five seconds. 4 times 5, 20 meters. Easy math. Our next section here, we are going at a speed of negative 6 meters per second. Remember that the negative 6 means it's a direction. It's a vector we're talking about. There is no such thing as a negative speed, but there is a negative velocity. So negative 6 meters per second, and we do that for another 5 seconds here. 5 so six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It's five seconds there. And that will equal negative 30 meters. Cool. All right. Now, our next section here, right? These are actually two shapes. Just to remind you, what we've actually been doing is we've been calculating the area here. So we need to calculate the area of this triangle and the area of this rectangle. How do we do a triangle? To remind you, a triangle is half of whatever rectangle or square would normally make it up. Because normally, if you had two triangles here, that would be a perfect rectangle. We've only got half, so whatever the uh, area is, we just halve it. Let me explain. We've got 4 meters per second. 4 meters per second, the top one. And then we're going to do that for 2 seconds. So 4 meters per second times by 2. And if I'll put that in bracket, we will divide by 2. We're going to halve it. So really, 4 times 2 divided by 2, that's just going to be 4 meters. Awesome. Okay. Our last box here, that will be a little bit easier. That's going to be a 4 times 3, 12, 13, 14, 15. And that is going to be 12 meters. Awesome. So now we need to draw our displacement time graph based on this information. So let's have a crack. Very similar to how we did the uh, displacement velocity graph in that we need to get, I might just move this 12 a little bit further away so we've got a bit more space. Um, the first thing that we need to sort out is actually our axes, okay? So we get our y and we get our x. x is the easy one. That's going to be time, put your units in, seconds, and we're going to be, looks like it's going to be in 5, 10, 15, 20. Not a perfect matchup, but we also need a 12 here. Okay. Awesome. And then we'll put our 0. Okay. Now our y axis, we need to find out what's our highest and what's our sort of lowest values really. We've got a 20. We've got a 12, a 4, a negative 30. I'm thinking negative 30, maybe break it in into sections of 10. 
that's probably going to be a bit easier than I could halve the 10 to a 5 and I could get a 4 and 12 pretty easy. So let's have a look. So we're going to have negative 30 here and I could third that pretty easy, negative 20. And I mean, look, if you want to spend, if you want to spend 20 minutes using a ruler, sorting this out, by all means. But that's not what I'm really after. I'm after, can you sort of convert these? Um, do you understand what is really going on? The 12, I'm just going to put that there. And the 4, slightly below half. And I think that's appropriate. Okay. We don't have any other negatives. Awesome. Now let's do this in orange. Make it a bit easier to see. What we have is an object that will start at zero displacement. Really important. That's where it's going to start. I know previously when we were doing the reverse, the velocity was starting at a higher value or something. That doesn't mean it's starting, like that doesn't mean it's not starting at the origin. For this case, we will always assume that we are starting at the origin. And before I start graphing as well, I've done a big mistake as well. I've got to put my displacement meters. Okay, always label the axes. Okay, so we start at our origin and we're going at four meters per second and we cover 20 meters in five seconds. So we've got our five seconds here and we've got our 20. So what we do is get your dots, connect it up. If I was to, if I had a bit of time, you know, uh, at the end of an exam or a test, I might say like, okay, let's just double check and see if I got things right. Does this make sense? If I was to cover 20 meters in five seconds, that would be 20 divided by five, which is four, four meters per second. Okay, I'm on the right track. You can do that. It doesn't take too much time. You'll set all your nerves and stuff, especially when we're doing these things that are a bit tricky. All right, now we are going negative 30 meters. Oh, now this is where things get a little bit crazy. Um, we're not going to hit negative 30, I'll show you in a sec. So we're going to go from neg negative 30 meters from here. So 20 minus 30 is 10. Negative 10. Okay. I'll show you what I mean. Because I'm going to confuse you a little bit because I've done my axes wrong. We started, we've hit 20 meters, but now we have to take away 30. And that's going to equal negative 10. Okay. So what we have is we're going to this point and we need to end up here. And we do that over the next five seconds, five to 10. Like that. Okay. 20 meters. Then we suddenly go to negative 30 meters. All right. In five seconds. And we'll cross the axes at some point. Not too stressed about finding out where that intersection is. This is the main part that I'm after. Okay. Then we go four meters in a positive direction. Okay, so we're starting at negative 10 plus four. I'll just write it down. Negative 10 plus four equals negative six. So we are going to end up going to negative six, which is probably around here. It's just a bit over halfway between that negative 10, like that. And then we are going to do 12 meters. All right, so negative six, negative six plus 12 equals six meters. And that will be over up to 15, just below the 10, halfway like that. And then we have zero meters per second for the next five seconds. That's an easy one. That will just be a flat. Now, because my my axis here is actually not good, so this is a good lesson for you folks. Um, I've I've wasted a, a bit of space here. I didn't need to go up to thirty. I probably could have finished at twenty, and I definitely didn't need to go to negative thirty or negative twenty. Um, so it's a bit bad on my part. But just in case you've done that, sometimes it might just be helpful to say like this is you know um, y equals in this case six and you know, I've got my working out here, but this would be uh, negative six here, that sort of thing, okay? Just to sort of help yourself out, if that makes a bit of sense. And what was this one? This was negative 10, negative 10 there, okay? Awesome. So, 
just to recap, this is a velocity time graph, I know it is, because I look at the axes, we have to convert it. Paint your picture, what's going on with this object? It's moving at a speed, then it's decreasing, yada yada yada. Next thing, I've got to calculate the area under the curve. I need to use the equation velocity times time equals displacement. So any squares, easy peasy, right? It's like year five math. Triangles, a little bit trickier. You just need to calculate the full rectangle and then you just halve it, okay? Show you working out, have it all there on your piece of paper. That would be easily worth a mark, okay? Next part, draw up your axes. Time, easy. It's the same as what it is for the first graph. Your y-axis, you got to be a little bit smarter than me. Uh, spend the time, maybe it's 30 seconds, just trying to understand, you know, what's my max, what's going to be my lowest. Um, if you do shortcut it, you're just going to have to label them. And then we start plotting. So you draw your circles in and then you connect the lines. This one is trickier though, because you're going to have to add or remove a displacement. So we started at 20 and then we had to minus 30 meters because we're going at a negative 30 meters per second. So, oh, sorry, negative six meters per second for five seconds. That's a displacement of negative 30. So we have to 20 minus 30, negative 10. This, just in case, just in case I've confused you, this is wrong. If I went 20 straight to negative 30, that is wrong, okay? This one is the correct one, okay? Well, that's a good tick. Um, other than that, the last thing is you can always just double check your work by doing the reverse operation. Okay, so we've gone 20 meters in five seconds, 20 divided by five, that's four. Oh, that does match up. I'm pretty confident things are going sweet. All right, good luck. This is, this is the final part of the, uh, the motion graphs. If you are, and this is the hardest one, I think the displacement velocity is a bit easier. If you're struggling with it, don't stress. That's like part of it. When I was first learning this, it took me many days. I had to sleep on it a few times. I think I dreamt about it once or something and it clicks. It'll start to happen, but you need, as long as you're putting the work in and you're asking questions and you're working as a team, it will start to make sense. And it'll be very valuable for when we are looking at the, the motion of a rocket later on in class. All right. Peace out.